Hey everyone, so if you happen to be a 3D printer owner, you almost certainly have heard of sites like Thingiverse before. But what do you do if you can't find what you're looking for? The answer is CAD design. Now if you're trying to make a copy of something you already own, you'll find that the easiest solution would be to buy a 3D scanner, but those do not come cheap. However, if what you're trying to model has flat features like this, then the regular old paper scanner can actually help a lot. So that's what I've got planned today. A guide on how to use a regular old scanner to help speed up your CAD design. Hey, welcome back to Phaser Tech. My name's John. All right, so lately I've been working on a little project here at home that ended up becoming the inspiration for this video. I recently bought a portable air conditioner for my room, and this particular one is a dual hose unit that comes with a mounting kit that's meant for a window. However, there's two problems with this. One, my room doesn't have a window, it has a sliding door. And two, the part where the hose is mounted into has both the hoses sitting right next to each other. It appears some of the hot air from the exhaust gets sucked into the intake hose, which is probably reducing the overall efficiency. It doesn't appear to be a major issue, but regardless, I'd rather have a bit more separation between the exhaust and the intake. So I decided to rig up a solution and build my own sliding door panel for the hoses. So the first step was to take this piece and turn it into two separate pieces so I can mount the hoses away from each other. And I plan to mount each of these pieces onto a long piece of wood that's the height of the sliding door and cutting a square section into the wood for each of these pieces that I print. Now these pieces won't be small. Each one needs to be at least 11 inches long, which is actually too big for many of the popular 3D printers on the market. Fortunately, I have several printers, including a heavily upgraded Ender 5 Plus, which offers a very large printing bed that's perfect for this project. Let's first talk about the CAD design software I used for this. There are several great choices when it comes to CAD design software, but I'll be using Fusion 360 for this guide since they offer a free license for students and hobbyist users at home. Also, this guide is meant for intermediate and beginner users who are at least familiar with the basic tools in Fusion 360, such as how to create sketches and how to do extrusions. So if you're completely new to CAD design, then you might want to start with some other tutorials first before learning the techniques in this video. Alright, let's get into it now. So the first thing I'll do is scan the plastic hose attachment and make sure to use the scanner's highest DPI setting for best results. Then open up Fusion 360 and start a new project. To import the scanned image, go to Insert Canvas, then click Insert from my computer and select your image. Select the plane on which you want to place the image on, which would usually be the XY plane. Then modify the opacity to make it easier to see and then hit OK. Click on the top plane and zoom in to get a good overhead view. Then right click the image and go to Calibrate. Select a feature to be used as a reference. In this case I'll use the width of the opening at the center. It's about 8.179 millimeters for this example. Next I'll measure the real object with calipers and calculate the difference in scale. In my case, it's 103 divided by 8.179. Now go back to Edit Canvas and modify the Scale Plane XY box. Change it to the scale you calculated. Alright, now it's time for the fun part. We're going to sketch the pattern of the image now. How you go about this will depend on the specific geometry of your object. And this is where you can get a little creative with it. For this shape here, I utilized the three-point circle quite a bit because it gives much more flexibility when it comes to matching the non-perfect circles on the canvas. Do the best you can and don't worry too much if it's not completely perfect, but this will depend on your specific use case. I'll let this clip continue for another minute or two so you can see exactly what I did before I continue with the guide.
Once you're done, I suggest extruding the sketch by one or two millimeters to start with for the test prints. This is so you don't waste so much filament on the test prints. The last thing I did was create a large rectangle you see here. Now we need to grab the patterns we just drew by clicking all of them while holding the control key. Once they're all highlighted, go to extrude and enter a negative value to cut out the shape. You can see now we're getting pretty close to done with the model, but we have one more thing to check. Measure the resulting body around the same location as before. It should be pretty close to the length that was measured on the physical object. Modify the scale of the body if needed to get as close as possible to the original. But that wasn't necessary in my case here. Now we're ready to print. Right click the body and go to save as mesh. You can now open this STL file with Cura or whichever slicer you prefer and send it to your 3D printer. Enjoy this footage I captured of my Ender 5 Plus printing this design. Then I'll wrap up the video with some final thoughts. Once the part is done, try it out to see if it's a good fit. If not, make the adjustments in the design and do another test print. Repeat until you get it right. So I did three iterations of the test print before I finally arrived at my final design. And it fits great. I'll snap it in here. And as you can see, that's a pretty good almost perfect fit and see it snapped in it's not coming out the final steps will be buying a piece of wood cutting it to fit the sliding door height and then cutting slits on the side for these to slide in but before i do that i'm going to be making a prototype with cardboard first just to make sure everything fits but if you'd like to see me make a video about how i do the final version with wood please leave a comment below or if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave them also. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. And stay tuned for more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.